Hello, I'm George from Panoceris Yacht Charters and today we are going to show you our Beneteau 45 Semiramis. Before we proceed to the technical presentation of the yacht, let's have a quick look at the living spaces of the yacht. The layout of this yacht is four cabins and two heads. Now we can proceed to the technical presentation of the yacht, so let's start with the cabins. We are now on the stern right cabin and under the bed we can find all the master switches of the yacht. Here we have all the electrical switches of the yacht. The black switch is the general master switch of everything inside the yacht. This red switch is for the engine and this red switch is for the service batteries. The yellow switches here are thermical fuses. This one is for the anchor winch. This is for the electric windlass. And this thermical switch is for the folding platform outside. A few things about the master switches. The master switches should remain on all the time, unless you have an emergency situation. About the thermical fuses, if you want to use the anchor winch, the electric windlass or the folding platform, you need to check first that the thermical fuse is in the right position. If you stress the anchor winch too hard, the thermical fuse may trip. If you're traveling with children on board, we would recommend you to close the thermical fuse of the electric windlass and the folding platform in order to prevent an accident. We are now in the bow right cabin and under the bed we can find the bow thruster. The switch for the bow thruster is right here. You can turn off this switch only if you have a problem. In front you can find the motor of the bow thruster and the battery. Under the bed you should not store any luggage. We are now in the kitchen area. All the cooking equipment is located inside these lockers. Cups, plates, glasses are inside here. About the stove and the oven, to switch on, you need to press inside, turn and use a lighter. After you keep it pressed for a few seconds to heat up, you can release it and then adjust the flame. To close it, bring it to the zero position. The same applies for the rest. About the oven, you can lock and unlock the door from here. To start the flame on top, you need to press the button inside and turn to the right. After you keep it pressed for a few seconds to heat up, you can release it. To stop the flame, you bring the button to the zero position. To start the flame at the bottom, you need to press inside Turn to the left. To close it, you bring it in the middle. You can only use the flame either on top or below. You can release the tilt of the kitchen from here. The gas valve for the kitchen is located inside here. This yellow switch is the gas valve for both the stoves and the oven. Now it's on. 
to close it, you need to turn it to the right. To open, you bring it again to the normal position. This valve is to select between fresh water and sea water for the foot pump on the counter. Here we have the motor of the one fridge, so try not to put any bags around here in order for the motor to have enough ventilation. Here we have the foot pump and here the lever for the foot pump. This yacht is equipped with two fridge units, one on the top and one here. Let's start with this one. Inside this fridge unit you can find the small deep freezer. You can adjust the temperature of the fridge from the switch on the right. About the top fridge, you open from here. When you open the cover, it locks here. You can adjust the power from the switch here. In order to close the cover, you need to pull the pin out, hold the top cover and let it drop gently. This fridge unit is also equipped with a pump. If you have ice cubes inside the fridge or water, you can press the button right here and pump all the waters outside of the fridge. Now let me show you about the toilets. To make shower, you take this out. In order to take all the waters out, you can press this button for the shower drain. If you press this button, the pump will work for 20 seconds automatically. Now let me show you how to operate the toilet. Before I show you this, uh, keep in mind that it's very important not to throw anything inside the bowls to avoid any kind of blockage. To flush in, you need to turn the switch to the left and pump. If you turn the switch to the right, you flush out. The seacox of the yacht for this toilet is located inside this locker. The stern right toilet is equipped with a waste tank which is located inside here. Inside the locker here we have the waste tank valve. In this position the valve is on. To close the valve you need to turn it to the right. In this position everything goes inside the waste tank. To empty the waste tank you need to open again the valve. Now let's go through the inventory under the couch. First of all, this small couch can either be positioned like this or like this. Under here we can find one fire extinguisher. Under the couch here we can find some of the life jackets. Lifelines are located at the back. Inside here we can find the rest of the life jackets and the battery for the VHF. Here we can see the fresh water pump. This yacht is equipped with two water tanks. One in the bow and one in the stern. For the moment the tank in the bow is closed. If you want to switch between the two tanks you need first to close the switch from the panel which I will show you later in the video and then close the one tank, open the other one. Then you will need to start again the fresh water pump from the panel and then you will need to open one tap to take the air out of the system. Behind here we have the charger for the VHF battery. If you run low on service batteries there is a possibility that you hear an alarm coming from this device. In order to stop the alarm you need to press the reset button and then you will need to charge the batteries. Under this side of the couch we have the water heater and the toolbox. Inside the chart table you can find all the maps of the yacht, Greek waters pilot, first aid regulations, hand bearing compass, mirror signals inside here, divider and parallel ruler. Above the chart table you can find the PIRB. Inside this locker you can find the first aid kit and a bag with the flares. Inside this bag contains two smoke signals, three hand flares and three parachute rockets. Inside this locker you can also find some safety flags. 
Here we have one of the two plotters. In order to have all the inf information available, you need to have both the interior plotter and the exterior plotter on at the same time. Behind the plotter, you can find all the manuals of the yacht and all the necessary navigational equipment. In the last locker, you can find black ball signals, cockpit light for outside, some winch handles and the rest manuals of the yacht. Here we have the VHF. To open the VHF you need to turn this switch. To adjust the volume you adjust from here. To change the sandals from here. To switch off you close it here. Here we have the radio. The radio has Bluetooth, USB and auxiliary. Now let me show you the switchboard. From this side and on we have the 230 volts. When the yacht is connected to shore power you see red light here. Here we have the switch for the battery charger and the AC outlets. This switch is for the water heater if you want to use it through the shore power cable. In order to use it, you bring the switch to on position, you wait half an hour, you close the switch and then you make your shower. There is a second way to use the water heater without the shore power. While you have the engine running, you have automatically hot water. From this side and on, you have the 12 volts. Cabin light switch controls all the lights inside the yacht the shard drains in the toilets and the electric fans around the yacht. Here we have the switch for the fridge unit. This switch controls both fridges. If you want to switch off one of the two fridges, you need to do it manually through the switch inside the fridge. This is an auxiliary switch. Here we have the fresh water pump. When the fresh water pump works, you see green light here. Here we have the bilge pump. Manual and auto. This switch is for the navigation instruments. This switch controls the plotter inside and the instruments outside plus the autopilot. Here we have the deck light, anchoring light, motoring lights, and sailing lights. Here we have the indications for the batteries, water levels, and diesel tank. To see about the diesel tank, you press once, and you see the indication here. For water, you press once for tank number one, twice for tank number two. For battery level, you press one for the service batteries and two for the engine. This yacht is equipped with solar panels, which are completely automatic. The engine is located inside here. This yacht has a 55 horsepower Yanmar engine. The consumption of this engine is about 4 liters per hour at 2200 RPM. To check the cooling water of the engine, you need to check the plastic bottle at the back. To check the engine oil, you need to use the dipstick on the left. If you want to check the oil, you need to check the oils of the engine when the engine is completely cold in order to have an accurate measurement. Now, let's continue with the outside of the yacht. Let's start with the lockers located left and right. Inside here, we can find the life raft, the second fire extinguisher, 50 meter floating line, shore power cable, foot pump for the dinghy, and spare ropes. On the other side, We have the second anchor with 20 meters of chain, 
20 liters of spare diesel, 5 liters of unleaded fuel for the outboard, and some flippers and masks. This lever here can be used to operate the manual bilge pump which is located here. About the emergency tiller, the lever is located on the wall inside this locker and it can be placed here after you have removed the cap with the winch handle. When sailing, the rails should be closed like this and like this and the gangway needs to be up and secured. If you want to deploy the gangway, you need first to remove the safety knots, press down the brake, give a gentle push to the gangway, After you adjust the height around 20 centimeters over the dock, you secure the line inside the brake and then it's very important to add two safety knots over the breaker for security. Now, to open the folding platform, first of all, we need to remove the rails. Now, to operate the platform, first of all, under the platform here, there is a black rope. You need to pull this rope and give a gentle push to the top side up. After you have checked that from both sides the platform has disengaged from the hinges, you can press this button down. You need to check that no rope is in the way. When the platform goes level, you release the button. When the platform is deployed, no more than two people should be on. Also, you should not jump over here. There is empty space to put your stuff under here. Also, gas bottles are located here. The shore power cable can be connected here. Cockpit sour is located here. About the platform, when you are sailing or when the yacht is moving, the platform should be closed. Now, to close the platform, first of all, you need to make sure that there are no obstacles in the way. After that, you need to come here to press the button to go up. After the platform is in this position, you need to pull again this rope, press down the top side and release the rope and check that from both sides the platform has been locked. Now, let me show you where to fill the water tanks. The stern water tank can be filled from this point. There is a second point to fill the front tank in the bow. Diesel tank can be filled from this point, right here. Now, let me show you the instruments. First of all, here we have the outside plotter. You can either zoom in or zoom out from here or from the cursor. In all the instruments, you can find the speed, position and depth. Depth is measured from the physical position of the sensor. This yacht has a draft of 2.1 meters. Here we have a multi-display. You can change the display from here. In this, we can see the wind. About the autopilot, you can either operate it from here or from here. You can press auto plus 10 minus 10, plus 1, minus 1, standby and it's free. You can also operate it from here. Standby. To start the engine, first of all, you need to switch on the panel. You will need to wait a few seconds to heat up. Now, you can press the top button. 
After the engine has started, you need to check that water is coming out from the left side. Now for the gear. If you want to charge your batteries, you need to press this button inside for neutral. 1200 RPM is enough to charge the batteries. When I bring the lever in the middle, the pin will go out. Now, to go forward, you first plug the gear and after one second, you go with the power. From forward to reverse, you need to wait a few seconds in neutral for the revs to go down. For reverse, you plug the gear and you give more power. Neutral. When the engine is running, we can start the bow thruster. To start the bow thruster, you need to press both buttons for one second. You will know that the bow thruster is on with this green light. The bow thruster will use it for 10 seconds at a time. To go right, I wait 2 seconds and then I go left. To switch off the bow thruster, I need to press both buttons together. And I see that the light goes off. Now, to stop the engine, I need first to press the stop button and then I need to keep this button pressed for 4-5 seconds. When you are sailing, gear must remain always in neutral. About the anchor winch. The anchor winch will work only when the engine is running. This yacht is equipped with 70 meters of chain and in the end there is a security rope. The controller for the anchor winch is located inside here. For the first few meters, when you are taking the anchor down, you need to go slow in order for the anchor to go down smoothly. To take up, you need to press the up button. For the last meters, when you are taking the chain up, you need to go slow in order for the anchor to go up smooth and don't hit the hull. When you take the anchor completely up, this chain should not be very tight. When you lift the anchor, the chain needs to be vertical. The yacht needs to go to the chain. If the chain is very tight, the thermical fuse may trip. You can also tight and untight the brake of the anchor winch from here with the winch handle. Here in front we have a big locker. In this locker you can store empty luggages or fenders. The proper place to store the dinghy when sailing is here. You can secure the dinghy from both sides and at the back. Also, before you open the Genoa sail, you need to make sure that all the top windows are shut in order not to get caught by the slacks of the Genoa. About the mainsail, this yacht is equipped with a full button mainsail. In order to open the mainsail, you need to unhook all these clips all the way to the back. Also, when you don't use the mainsail, you can hook the halyard under here, so in case of strong wind, the sail cannot go up. So now that we want to open it, we can unhook it. This sail has two reefs. You can see which reef is which from the colors at the back. The reef that is closer to the stern is the first reef and the reef that is closer to the bow is the second one. We recommend to leave the reefs loose when closing the sail so when you lift the sail up again it will be much easier for you. You can operate the main sail from the cockpit. To open the main sail, you need to direct the yacht facing the wind. Now for the Genoa. To open the Genoa, you need first of all to open the brake here. Then you will need to pull one of the two Genoa seats depending the wind. And also at the same time you need to have control of this rope in order for the Genoa not to open with too much force. Now to close the Genoa. First of all, you need to pull this rope 
while at the same time having a bit control on the Genoa seat that it's in use in order for the Genoa to close tight. Then you will need to close the brake and then secure the Genoa seats. You can operate the main sail using this electric winch. This electric winch can be operated from this button or you can operate it with a winch handle. If you want to use it manually, you can also close the thermical fuse from inside in order to avoid accidental push of this button. When using this electric winch, you need to be careful because you can damage the sail. Now, let me show you how to operate the outboard. Before you start the engine, make sure that these screws are tightened. To start the outboard, you need first to open the fuel from here. Open the choke when it's cold. We open the air vent and then we bring the gas to start position. Then we pull the cord out till we find resistance. Then we should pull it harder. When you start, close the choke. The propeller works automatically. So when I open the throttle, the propeller will start. Now, to switch off the outboard, you need to press this button till the motor stops. Then you will need to close the air vent tight so no water is coming in and then close the fuel. This outboard is air cooled so you won't see any water coming out of it. But in order for the outboard to, to operate properly, it needs to be inside the water, not outside in the deck. From all the Panoseris Yacht Charter team, thank you for watching our video. If you have any questions, we are more than happy to answer them. Let us know how you feel about our video in our social pages. We're looking forward into welcoming you on board.